Timeless, Chapter 3, Part 2. I would advise using a Mentuit, though, and I fully do agree with the trial period for some basic training tasks. The grounding exercise alone will likely wipe him out for some time, but with traumatized ponies, that usually takes a few days to recover. I quite honestly can't imagine what centuries of suppressed emotion will do to him, though. We will advise him of that, and proceed however he feels most comfortable. Luna replied, now eating a hole in her pancake and pushing her muzzle through it, sticking her tongue out at her sister. Celestia giggled, levitating two blueberries over to stick them on the pancake as fake eyes. Quite a fashion statement, dear sister. Now then, shall we go help our strange guest? Apparently, he has been quite amicable, and has given the guards no trouble at all. He ate his meals and slept most of the day after writing that resume. It also appears that he's mostly nocturnal too, or at least can vary his schedule. Luna nodded, the two rulers meandering down the halls towards the guest room after finishing their meal. The two royal guards outside the door saluted and promptly opened the doors. The stallion in question turned around, promptly bowing as the rulers couldn't help but smile. Rise, Shifting Sands, and follow us, please. Luna remarked, such an impeccable display bordering on amusement. Yet it remained respectful, all at the same time. Once again clad in a strange armor, Shifting simply nodded, trotting out and following the two rulers down the halls. How are you feeling today? Yesterday was quite an interesting one, to say at least. We would have fetched you sooner, but we have heard that you slept most during the day. Luna asked, prompting the stallion to look over in curiosity. Better, your highness, thank you. And I can shift my schedule as much as needed, but as you said, yes, yesterday was... interesting. Sleep offered some relief, at least for a time. Thank you, by the way. He explained, and Luna let out a soft hum in reply. You are most welcome, and are glad to hear it. At the moment, we are heading to one of my spell chambers. My sister and I may be able to lift the clouds that obscure their minds so often. Sister? The Night Princess said, then glanced over at Celestia to continue. The spell is used for traumatized ponies nowadays and is a form of grounding. It re-energizes the magical pathways of a creature and assists in releasing suppressed emotions of a sort. It has shown remarkable success in assisting others coming to terms with various events. We believe a form of this spell can break you from the blinks, as you call them, and end the strange disconnect that you feel. That is, if you are open to try. A sharp gasp hissed from Shifting's mouth, and the stallion staring at each of them in shock. Wait, really? <laughs> Yes, of course, that that is possible though. I I thought it was part of the curse. Luna shook her head sadly, letting out a sobering sigh. Hey, we underwent similar adjustments for a year or two when we first adjusted to agelessness when ruling. Time was a fickle thing, and emotion was strange to comprehend. We thought but a moment passed, and yet it had been a day. And any feelings that we had were like mist on the wind. We believe that you have simply not been able to adjust to such a timeless existence. Your mind was that of a mortal pony, not aided by the usual magics presented during an ascension. That, we believe, is what caused the strange passage of time for you, as well as the emotional barrier. So, this spell should allow you to break from both of those. Luna explained, then stopped to look at Shifting with a guarded gaze. But, be warned, Shifting Sands. If you accept this help, the repercussions could be difficult. Many individuals are emotionally unsettled for the better part of a few days. You have not a single event to come to terms with, but a millennium of existence. The effects will likely be exaggerated and long-term. The fuzziness that you experience will be lifted, but the emotional impact of your entire life, or at least that affected by the paw, will come back in full force. Shifting lowered his gaze, brow furrowed, and then he nodded. I understand, but I would still like to proceed. I'll accept being a complete wreck for a decade as a fair price to be able to feel everything fully again, to feel like I'm living in the present instead of on a speeding train. He stated, head perking up as Luna gave him a gentle pat with a wing. Then the three of them proceeded on once again. Well, I doubt that it would be that long, Shifting Sands. Celestia interjected with a slight smile. It will be the most difficult at first, but then normalize as your mind adjusts to the new reality. We believe that you have been living in this transition stage for some time, so it should, in theory, adjust naturally. However, you will have many tools at your disposal to cope, the finest therapists in the castle, or speaking with us for a time, if you'd prefer. Neither ruler missed how the unicorn's ears perked up at that, shifting immediately glancing to Luna. Wait, so you'll let me speak with you? To help cope with all of this? He asked, seeming both confused and slightly in awe. Well, of course. To say that your situation is unique is a gross understatement. 
Well, he certainly could find a few moments to help you adjust. Luna added, not able to resist a smile and seeing the stallion's entire demeanor soften slightly. I would greatly appreciate that. He whispered, eyes then turning to look at the stained glass windows that dotted the current hall that they traversed. Hmm. The elements. Such a new thing, and more useful than a sword or spell at times. Shifting Muse to himself as they walked. The stallion's words now seemed muted and without emotional connection, as though he was watching the passage of a theater performance. Here, Shifting. Luna directed him down a side room, the barren stone hallway then opening up into a massive domed area. Bookshelves lined the walls, and thin glass slits throughout the curved roof allowed light to shine softly throughout the room. And the floor was barren, save for a massive circular stone platform in the center. Shifting paused at the edge of the platform, his ears pinning back briefly. I can still sense the residue of many spells long since cast. <sighs> this grounding spell is going to be quite an ordeal, huh? He asked, as though the entirety of the situation was finally registering. The spell itself is not really complicated at all. A magical jumpstart, if you will. It has been tried and tested hundreds, if not thousands of times, from incidents as small as a traumatic childhood fear, to soldiers who have returned from rare but brutal instances of combat, and is formally recognized by the General Health Board. However, the amount of power that we are using is well above normal. Luna elaborated. Can you please explain exactly what I can expect, as best as you can? Shifting questioned, hopping up onto the platform cautiously. It will be a tinkle, a rush of magical energy, and then a pressure all over your body. It will then focus on your horn or head in general, where you may experience a bit of pain for moments, but then it'll pass. And after that, it'll be complete. Most ponies don't even notice anything other than a strange full body buzzing, but I suspect those greater effects will occur for you. Celestia said. Afterwards, you will be... Um... How best to describe it? The Solar Princess mused. Bluntly, please. Shifting piped up, prompting a hint of a smile from Luna. You will be emotionally vulnerable and nigh unstable. Not acting without restraints, but subject to the full swing of the feeling that you have been lacking. A millennium of bottled up experiences and realizations will hit you at once, and so mood swings will be very common. Luna added, with a nod to Celestia. Shifting nodded, his brow furrowing with a sigh. Uh, I suppose that makes sense. And he said that my mind just hasn't adjusted to this... agelessness. So is that why I can't feel things somewhat? But everything else at times feels numb? I, I can't even remember the last time I laughed without restraint. The stallion said, the thought causing him to shiver slightly. I've been dwelling on that thought often, and it still continues to disturb me. Nearly as much as not being able to feel like I'm living in the present, everything just speeding by at times. You are correct. In trying to comprehend the lack of age, your mind has defended itself by dulling your existence in both emotion and time. In effect, it was protecting you from an adjustment that never really came. Luna concluded, a shifting side. Well, I wish to apologize in advance for sobbing in any hallways, throwing a dinner plate against a wall, or any other strange occurrence that will result from this. He muttered, prompting an amused titter from each princess. Even if such is to occur, you are well forgiven in advance. Now then, are you ready? Luna asked, and Shifting nodded, then raised a hoof in question. May I return here, as I'm adjusting? I have some spells that I've used to provide myself comfort over the years, but I don't wish to alarm any pony. Such as? Celestia asked, cautiously. Their ley line connections, self-meditation spells, that sort of thing. Old magic in which many unicorns, Kirins, and other species communed with a land, if I can best describe it. Their language was rather difficult to process, what with being far-removed monks. Shifting admitted, prompting a nod in return. We would wish to see these magic methods before you employ them at length, but that seems fine. Luna replied, taking her place a short distance from Celestia. I'm ready then. And your highnesses, thank you. Shifting stated, taking a low and ready stance in the center of the platform, almost as though he was bracing for a blow. You are most welcome. Now close your eyes, please. Luna instructed, her horn charging with magic as Celestia did the same. The stallion shivered as the two alicorns enveloped his frame with a glowing white mist, the tendrils of magic burrowing into his core. A pained grunt then slid out from behind the unicorn's clenched teeth, his head shaking slightly. Are you able to continue shifting? Luna called, prompting a nod. Painful! Bad migraine. But continue. He hissed, swaying slightly as the spell proceeded. His head bowed down slightly as the mist around the stallion's body hummed with power. And then the noise and light seemed to crescendo, and then it vanished, leaving the unicorn standing on the steaming stone platform. 
Well, that was rather anticlimactic, other than the pain, but the pressure was nothing. Shifting mused, stepping down on shaky legs. And the odd fatigue. Hmm. Luna and Celestia looked to each other, the stallion's words now seeming clear and genuine, and his brown eyes were now sharp and keen as he glanced at each of them before he bowed his head. Thank you both. I suppose now I wait for the after effects. I originally assumed that they would be immediate, but things feel a bit different though. Nothing too drastic. Luna's eyes widened in surprise, her sister blinking slowly as the stallion spoke. Are... are, are you alright, Shifting? Luna asked the stallion cautiously. I... I feel rather odd, so something's slowly blowing up, but otherwise okay. Why are you two looking at me like that? He asked. Because you are crying. The stallion looked to the ground, and then seeing the steady stream of tears trickle down from his face, he swiped a forehoof across his eyes. However, the gesture did nothing to stem the steady river that flowed from his cheeks. Only now did emotion twinge at his features. Shifting's jaw clenched as his rump hit the floor with a thud, hind legs giving out. I... I suppose that I am... Looking to each other, Luna tossed her head to Celestia, the Solar Princess taking her leave silently. Is there anything that we, or I, can do for you, Shifting? Do you wish to stay here alone for now, or...? Luna asked cautiously, prompting a shrug from the confused stallion. I would greatly appreciate it if you could stay Princess Luna, Miv, but for just a moment. Shifting's ears flattened to his skull, the stallion looking away as though ashamed. I've always found the moon and stars to be comforting. Your presence as well, a few times that we've met before. So... His words drifted off with a slight shrug. The alicorn nodded, eyes widening in slight surprise at his words, but agreed, sitting down next to the unicorn as soft sobs began to rack his frame. He didn't say anything at first, but the invisible weight pressing down on his shoulders was nearly palpable. Shifting looked over to wherever so briefly, a hopeful idea seeming to spark, but... And he seemed to think better of what thoughts passed his consciousness. Taking a guess, Luna scooted closer and spread a wing over shifting shoulders, a slightly smaller pony's head shaking slightly. I thought it inappropriate, he whispered, prompting a sad smile from Luna. We assume such thoughts, but it is not so clearly needed. No more words were said for a time, tears trickling steadily down shifting Sansa's face as he leaned on Luna's shoulder. The weight seemed to lift from shifting shoulders slightly as he leaned against her side. A simple touch of companionship seemed to offer a bit of relief. He finally voiced a question that both made Luna's own throat close with emotion, and gave heavy insight as to what tormented the stallion so. They're all gone, aren't they? Every creature I've known over the past thousand years. They've really gone to dust. And yet I'm still here. Save the view. You, your sister, perhaps a few dragons, but every creature else is but ash. And yet, I... Her response was as brief as the alicorn could make it, not trusting her own words to remain as stoic as they needed to be at the moment. She had asked the same question to her own sister years ago, as tears had flooded down her cheeks on the week of her return. Luna's words were similar to Celestia's response then and she hoped that they would give as much solidarity as they had to her. Yes, and we must remain to ensure that their legacy lives on. I swear, I got a feeling that Shifting has romantic interests for Luna, and if he doesn't, I'm, I'm gonna shit in a litter box. Now let's get off of the shit talk and let's get on to our magically powerful donators. Top donators, TacoCat598, Peter Coltard, J Tin Man, Darkseid, Ponyman, and Gauntlet. Star 630, Raiden, Black Moonheart, Drake Love Dragon, Dospo, Delta Omega, Runescythe9852, Hunter Norman, Dash of Evergreen, Rhiny Dragon Wolf, Secret Moon, Tal Rasha, The Toilet Snake, Sword Brethren Mordred, Ron and Wandering, Random Person Man Guy, Easy, Jack Cadge, Skyogea, Leslie Perkett, Jordan Peterson, Crimson Kids and A9, Lightskin, Monster Kitty, Starlight Glimmer, Lightning Blitz, Squiddy Boy, David D. Sanchez, Soul Dragon, Gaggy, Trey, Shadow Drake, Joe Piercy, Alex 
XF, Rainbow Dash, Tilke Anderson, TV Killer, John Becker, Leon Reynolds, Raiden Speedster, Zach Rakow, Mystery CU, Edgar Garcia, One Kingdom One, Mr. Rusan, Vazuri, Dyslexic Character Sheets, Just a Random Boy, Hotrick Plencart, A Crazy Person, Ponyman365, Neapolitan, Six of Nine, Shyfire, and Stamp. Thank you all very much for watching this video, and live life to the fullest.